Hi, welcome to Prophetic Dateline. Sorry, I'm laughing. Mike is being funny here, and so it kind of knocked me off a second. But we are so glad that you joined us. We have with us the wonderful Patricia Busma. We I've known her quite a while. Um, Patricia and her husband John were in Toronto with the Catch the Fire with John and Carol Arnett. Uh, some of you may know, I know people watch this all over the world. There was a great, great move of God in Canada. Uh, the Toronto Revival is very historic. It's the 30th anniversary. 30th anniversary. And uh, we love John and Carol. And uh, so we just kind of everybody bring up everybody to speak. I'll tell you, she's a global prayer coordinator for uh, JH Israel. And this organization has a center theme 100,000 young Israelis and the IDF learned leadership from the Bible. That's pretty amazing. And if you want to know, she's a mother of six. God bless you, Patricia. Grandmother of eight. She's authored four books, Raising Burning Hearts, and her new book's coming out by Chosen, When Jesus Splits the Sky. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to <laughs> And she's joining us from Kansas City. Yeah, and it's yeah. difficult having her on because when we're talking about, hey, what's God sharing with you? You know, she goes, well, this and this and this and this. And this. Any of which could be an entire program. Yeah. You know, so you almost have to say, okay, Lord, how do we land on a particular topic? And I think we've got it. Yes, so. we do. But I I don't want to, uh, I know this might be throwing a bomb out, but um, has the Lord showed you anything about this shooting at the at the uh, parade for the Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, that was uh, tragic. You know, it was such an incredible. I preached that morning on the Super Bowl about a divine turnaround. That oh. game turnaround. I don't know if you noticed, but you know, trailing. It was incredible. Some of you know the threes. You know, the three yard pass to win the third Super Bowl as and Patrick Mahomes you know, did th 333 passes. Uh, the address was 3333 um, something way in it for the Legion Stadium. So all these great things we were celebrating. Then, of course, this terrible tragedy. But I want to say this. We have people close to us, uh, at least two that immediately were that shared about how hearing God speak to them to say, you got to leave now. You have to leave now. And they're like, why? It's not over yet. And and so even this one a lady, a friend of mine, she you know, her son wanted to stay, but then, then the son said, no, mom, I think you're right. We need to leave. They left right. And they were right where the shooting took place. And they left just minutes before another pastor from the city, same thing. So I feel like, yeah, the enemy was trying to obviously just, there's so much warfare in the sense of the city mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where there have been some incredible stories though. And to me, that's really abiding with the Lord and hearing his voice, being sensitive to hear and obey. So yeah, two different incidents that I know of where people were spared that we were going to be right at that spot. You know, it's so important, um, everyone watching and, you know, Mike to hear the voice of the oh, Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, there's so many times I don't want to get into a bunch of different things because we could just, you could just go down that and end up being a bunny trail. And I don't want to get away from what she's wanting to stay primarily here. So, yeah, well, I, I know that, yeah, many, many times in our life, you know, just hearing the voice of God and, you know, it's very interesting. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? I mean, how is the city, you know, I mean, you, you, some of you will be watching, it'll be a little bit after this time, but how's the city right now? You know, the city, I, I believe it's doing good, like, well, in terms of that, there's a, a comeback kind of spirit, you know, there's a, a the, the, there's been grief. Okay. There is grief. I won't, I don't want to say that we are actually bringing in some inner healing friends of ours that are going to come and do some seminars. But I also feel like the anointing is so strong. I don't know how to describe it. It's going through this painful time and going through the fire. And yet the glory of God, just even, I don't know, when I wake up in the morning, I just the glory of God when in here, this prayer room, the glory of God. So I just want to say I have hope for the turnaround. I have hope in the fact that even in this place of repentance and cleanse foundations, God wants to cleanse foundations. And that there is great glory coming out of that. So, yes, it's been painful. Yes, there's been trials, but 
there is great hope and expectation. Oh, well, that is great. And, you know, even though you passed your Catch the Fire USA, you have had real connections with the prayer room a- yeah. as well. Yeah. And I'm in the prayer room. right. I'm in the IHOP KC prayer room right now. So, yes, yeah. it's been, been uh, painful. You know, one of the things that I want to share is about how I believe that there's a call from the Lord to pass tests in this season. Mm -hmm. And how how are we doing with these tests? Like, you know, it says in Psalm 66 about you've tried us in the fire. The Lord has tested our hearts. And so I believe that there is a a real element of how are we doing as we're viewing, let's say, what's going on in Kansas City? Or how are we viewing what's going on in Israel? There's a lot of parallels. I don't know if you know that even when the (laughs) the first email came, that was, you know, directed to the founder of this ministry, it was October 7th. It's very interesting because the timing, October 7th, of course, was the day when there was the uh, atrocities in uh, in Israel. But my point is this, the Lord is definitely cleansing foundations, you know, saying it's it's no, no more toleration of secrets or secret sin or any of that stuff. But how are we doing in not, I don't know, throwing the first stone? How are we doing in the element of, Okay, I don't want to get tripped up in this. And we're praying for the global church even to say this is not a reflection of God himself. He is faithful. He is, you know, righteous. And so anyways, there's that. And then as it pertains to Israel, I just feel like there's tests going out big time as far as the nations, as far as churches. Are we going to stand with Israel or are we going to, you know, be silent or or not preach about it? Don't want to be controversial. Don't want to offend anybody. At the same time, I just it's the, their battle is on for truth. That's what's happening. The battle is on for truth. Well, as we're talking about Israel, I, uh, let's circle just for a second to the uh, the JH Israel. What JH stands for? Yeah, it really doesn't stand for anything. There's JH Ranch in California, and oh. so this. So there is a uh, the JH Israel is there is a ranch type. Uh, structure in Ariel, Israel, where, as you said, there's 100,000 different Israelis, the, all of the IDF, they go through this. It's bringing everybody in the nation of Israel back to the Bible. Basically, if you believe in Israel, you need to believe in God, because <laughs> it's all a miracle. Mm-hmm. And so many uh, of Israel has been secular. So mm-hmm. now, through the initiatives of J.H. Israel, even there's a Bible in every school now. Not, I'm not talking on the New Testament, Tanakh, you know, the, the Old Testament. But bringing the whole revelation of God, I don't know if you know, but since the war, one third of Israelis uh, who never really prayed or paid any attention to God have turned back to the Lord. So there is a spiritual awakening happening there. So it's great timing for this. But we also, uh, the USIEA, United States Israel Educational Association, is part of the organization which is helping congressmen and women from Washington learn about and go to Israel to know how to stand with Israel as it pertains to American policy. So that's part of it as well. Yeah, that is so great. And, uh, you know, as you're praying, uh, we might just stop a second and and ask you, you know, in this global prayer that you have for Israel, the global prayer coordinator for (laughs) JH Israel, uh, how are you praying? Like, you know, uh, Uh, and and before you answer that, I want to just backtrack just a second. You know, you know very well that I gave this word, call 911, I think, before yeah, the atrocity. September. Yeah, and so did Heidi Baker had a very similar word, uh, John and Jolene Hamill. So the Holy Spirit was sharing. How do we pray? Yes, that's really good. You know, they're praying biblical prophecies I, is very important. Like the Isaiah 62, the Lord is calling watchmen on the wall to not give him any rest until Jerusalem is a praise in the earth. Is it a praise? No, it's a form of contention right now. It's a, it's been turned over 80 different times throughout history, but the Lord is calling the church to really care, pray, give, stand with, and, and be like the Dietrich Bonhoeffers of the first of second world war or the Corrie ten booms that we're not silent, that we get it, you know, and what do you mean by get it? I really believe we need to go back to the Abrahamic covenant, which is the three things that the Lord says he's going to, you know, through Isaac, that there would be descendants. I would give you land, the Lord promised. And there was also the element of being a blessing to the nations of the earth. Well, we got Jesus through, you know, Jesus was a Jew. Let's not forget. But that land is part of the Abrahamic eternal covenant. You may look at Psalm 105. It's an eternal covenant. It's not one of the ones that was just temporary like Isaiah. 
So anyways, there's this element of do we understand this? Because Romans 9, 10, 11 makes clear that we, the church, are going to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Mm-hmm. And I want to say this. I believe this. I hope this is you know okay to say in your program. But I believe the enemy knows the Bible. Uh, Matthew 23 says where Jesus says, you will see me no more. He's speaking to the leaders of Israel, the Jewish leaders, and saying, you will see me no more until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Why so much anti-Semitism? Why all through the ages, I could give you the history, but you you know it, of anti-Semitism. It, the, there is 1,200% increase of anti-Semitic acts in America mm-hmm. yes. since the war. Yes. And why? Yes, the enemy hates the Jews. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm not even going to come split that sky until they acknowledge Yeshua as Messiah. Yeah, and that's and where we're Is yeah, that what your new book people. is about, When Jesus Splits the Sky? It's mentioned in there, but Jesus splits the sky is also about practical preparation for his return. Okay. In other words, of our hearts burning, of us being ready. Uh, but it's mentioned in there as well. But yes, important stuff. Yeah, you're so amazing, Patricia. You have you, God has just uses you in so many, many ways. I, I, you know, I love this revival that's coming. That was part of the word about call nine one one that a dark time was coming, terrorists were coming, but afterwards there would be a great spiritual revival in Israel. And Amen. I hadn't heard all these testimonies you're giving, so that really is encouraging to me. You know, yeah. uh, as, as it relates to Israel, Patricia, a lot of times uh, Americans think that as it relates to supporting Israel in this time, and they have a lot of needs, and we're talking about really fundamental needs like food, clothing, shelter, um, medicine, all of these different things that are needed since October 7th attack. A a lot of times we have a tendency to say, well, our government should do that. And actually, it it should be the body of Christ that should do that. And there should be mobilization by the body of Christ to get the resources that need to go to Israel, to Israel. And... um, you know, you, I'm, not, I'm not really seeing or hearing that call so much as I'm hearing from people to say, oh, well, we need the government to do it. You know, yeah. those are the same people who say, we are the government, we are the ecclesia on earth, and, and the, then, then function you know, as that, function as that. Let's jump on that for a minute, because I think that's a very good point that you're making. In the, you know, the Genesis uh, 3 about, you know, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. That also is financial. And like, for example, I can give you multitudes of examples. My sister is a a big wig uh, um, real estate broker in Canada. But all of a sudden, her business just shot up. I saw the difference. And I said, Linda, like, what happened? She says, oh, I just I started giving to Israel. I've seen that over and over again, that you put in your financial portfolio, giving to Israel in some financial way. Just watch what God does. I mean, just do a litmus test there, because we've certainly seen it. And there's something about really you know, blessing them in practical ways. Prayer, obviously, that's big. But, you know, there's a lot of practical needs right now as well in the in Israel. Yeah, I agree. And I think with generals, too, that we, you know, we jumped in and did offerings. We immediately and, did because our partners yeah. love Israel. Yeah, you know, and, so. and, and I think it was a key for us, you know, being blessed okay. and having a phenomenal year, yeah. you know, in the midst of all kinds of things shaking, you know, it, it's giving and and maybe you're watching and you go, well, I've never done that. Well, find a way. Find mm-hmm. There's some very good, uh, there's uh, the Joseph Storehouse, which yeah. we love, Barry and Betcha Siegel, we love to work with in Israel, uh, Tom Hess and Kate Hess, you know, the Jerusalem House of Prayer. Chuck Pierce and their group have, the, in fact, they just got back from doing some uh, some uh, supplies and yes, relief, su- yes. not relief supplies, but boots, for yes, example, and yes. some other things like that. Sukkoth Halal, you know, Rick Ravens, who's one of our prophets. Patricia's also, she didn't have it in her bio here, but you need, you should just put that in there. She is on our council, Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, too, and she speaks for us and all our stuff, you know. So anyway, oh, uh, let's let's shift a little bit. Before um, we do, hmm. I'd love to shift a little bit, but before we <laughs> shift, Patricia, um, I want to toss out something and maybe get your thoughts on it, because uh, this last October, I turned 75. Congratulations. And, and that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that We're Abram <laughs> Abram was 75 when he had his first encounter with God in Ur of the Chaldees. And that launched, oh. that launched him on, as we know, the whole path, as you look in the Old Testament, 
uh, and we're seeing yeah. the, the fruit of that today. And the thing that was interesting to me, one of the things that triggered me studying Abramor was uh, someone had given me a sweatshirt that said Israel since 1948. And the Lord said, that's absolutely wrong. It is right. not Israel since 1948. 1948 marked the time when humans decided that they would let Israel exist again. But really, the promise of Israel, the land of Israel, goes back to what I calculated to be, uh, it was 1885 B.C., when, exactly. when Abraham, or Abram had his first encounter with God. And at that time, God laid out the land of Israel. And he has, God has been consistent throughout history on, on the land. And as you know, land is really important to God. And, it, and he's the one, the only one who has the ability and authority to designate who gets to steward what land. You know, and that needs to be taught in the university campuses of America. Like, <laughs> we could like, put you, Mike, to teach the university campuses. <laughs> Absolutely true. And this is, again, the battle for truth as well as just history. Saying, And by the way, you know, the Lord says in Joel 3, he says, I'm entering into judgment of those who divide up my land. So right yeah. now, right now, you know, the call for the two states um, to take away what little land the Jewish state does have and give it over to those that have vowed to kill the Jews and drive them into the sea. So anyway, so this this is something that isn't just a half a world away. It's something that we need to understand and care about, pray into and make, you know, make our voices known to our political leaders as well, that we stand, we want to stand with Israel. Yeah, I think, and you know, and we are, listen, you watching, those of you watching I prayed daily for the innocent in Gaza. I prayed this yeah. morning about four yeah. o'clock. I prayed for the Christians yeah. in Gaza. You know, the believers, yeah. we we love the people, yeah. okay? So I don't want you to hear that we're hating on anybody. It's not true. You know, it's just because yeah. you're talking about biblical truth doesn't mean you're against somebody because God loves all people. He loves right. He loves the children of Hagar and Ishmael. And, and, you know, but there is a biblical position for the land itself. Uh, just another couple tips on how to pray, and then I want to shift here a minute. Yeah, well, praying, obviously, for the salvation of the Jewish people is important. That is, again, what we read in 9, Romans 9, 10, 11. But then I also want to, us to pray practically, like as in, Lord, help this war to end swiftly. I would yes. ask if everybody listening, I'm not sure when this is all coming up, but uh, it would be helpful to see things wrapped up even before Ramadan. Or, you know, Ramadan is also the time when there's a lot of uh, more incitement to violence. And so that's one thing. Obviously, the hostage situation. I think it's really important that we pray practically. Lord, you know, help these hostages. Help the Bibas family. Help the, the ones that are enduring trauma. The whole nation is in trauma right now. There's such a need for the healing of trauma. Mm -hmm. All of these ways that we can also pray practically as well as in the spiritual realm that there is, as it's already beginning, but this great awakening that the Lord wants to bring. Yeah, I think I think the wonderful story about uh, the president of Argentina interceding at the yes. Western Wall and then, yes. you know, for the release of hostages and who were the two hostages they released? Argentines. It was just Amazing. an incredible story, you know, how, what yeah. authority a president has, you know, yeah. when they begin to cry and weep, you know, for their and people. Unity, add unity in the nation is really important because that's what the problem was prior to the war. And it's they've been very united for the first months of the war, but there's just been so much, um, you know, coming against the government in Israel, as well as the situation with how the handling of the hostages. Anyway, so praying for unity is another mm -hmm. thing. So a lot of practical ways as well. Well, that is so good. And we do stand with Israel and we do, and we stand with the believers uh, wherever they are. And, and so that's true. I think this point, you said a little bit about it, that God is testing hearts right now. And I think this is very important yeah. because there's a lot of things, not only what's happened to Kansas City, but there's, uh, you know, as far as IHOP, you know, uh, struggling, yeah. you know, how to take care of that, you know. Um, and we know Satan wants to wound the prayer movement worldwide. And we don't want that yeah. to happen. I mean, Satan would have a big win, if you know, in doing yeah. that. Uh, 
But uh, you, you talked about testing hearts. We alluded to that. Can you just unpack that a little bit? What I believe is that if we're, we're needing to pass tests so that we will also uh, be able to enter into the level of glory that's coming. I, I don't think it takes a, a prophet to realize that Psalm 24, I believe, is for 2024. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're talking, starting in verse seven about, oh, king of glory, come in, you know, mm -hmm. open up the gates, king mm -hmm. of glory. Oh, I just feel it in my bones, like greater glory, signs and wonders, seeing it myself, like more people healed, unprecedented miracles. And so that is what is coming. But there's also this double edged sword that the glory, but then the purity, it, the holiness, it really must go together. They go together. And so the Lord is searching hearts and saying, you know, it's time to bring to the light anything that's there that needs to be brought to the light. I remember this may be too much information, but even when I got married and just early married, but the Lord said, tell your husband everything you ever did. I'm like, no, no, it's all under the blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and the Lord said, tell him. And so I'm like, oh, and so I sat him down and I just said, well, you're da, 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 whatever I can remember. <laughs> and, and my husband was so perfect. He was, they called him Richie Cunningham, but that's another story. So <laughs> I found that that after that, you know, just being, uh, of course, my husband's so gracious for giving. It just felt another level of intimacy, another level of being able to be so authentic. And it's time that we humble ourselves and say, you know, I do need some help in this area. And and like the Lord is just longing to to purify us as pure bride. He's coming without measure on a people without mixture. I do believe that is true. And so this level of glory, I don't want to be disqualified. Like, I just want to walk in everything that God has for me. So it's like, here's my heart, you know, do what you need to do. But, you know, I want to, I want to share something that I think is kind of relevant to this conversation. Well, one thing is the fear of the Lord, that we have this holy awe and reverence for God that, you know, I've heard it said, and I agree that if the fear of the Lord is in us, then all other fears fade away. In other words, we're not afraid of, people or, uh, you know, fear of man or fear of uh, what's coming in the economy or whatever, that we have such a trust and assurance in the Lord. And uh, that's one thing. And I was sharing with you about just feeling like the line of the tribe of Judah is roaring, that he is roaring this year. There's many biblical references. I've just studied them all. One of them is uh, Joel 3 again, but he roars, you know, from Zion or from Jerusalem. And what does that look like? You know, I just, I don't know, I just feel like there's a, an awe, a reverence that we have an awe and reverence. He's our Abba, he's our father, but he's also the king of the universe. So it's not okay, you know, to have secret sin and say, well, I'm a Christian and I, I, I grace, grace, grace. I love grace. Grace is <laughs> Grace, good, not for grace. Good point. But it's like, not sloppy agape, you know, not sloppy grace. It's like, Lord, you know, make us a pure people. And um, there's one other thing I wanted to share that uh, was a, based on a story quickly. There's a guy that we know in his 30s, amazing, super healthy, in-shape guy. On New Year's Eve, he was admitted to the hospital with sudden onset of sepsis, of double pneumonia, and even uh, what they believed was flesh-eating disease. So in a day, he was fighting for his life. My husband went, served him communion on New Year's Eve. And that friend did die six times that night. He was revived, oh. uh, revived, brought back. And then the doctors figured out, hey, we need to take his blood out of his body, throw it, put it through a dialysis machine to cleanse it, put it back in his body. And that's what started to stabilize him. And when I was on New Year's Day, just, you know, being with the Lord, I felt this so clearly. He's saying the death, the destruction of 2023 and there was a lot it was a difficult year for many that that must give way to resurrection life in 2024 Man. and i believe that there's a key here and it is the blood of jesus and the whole thing of taking communion you know we talked about mike looking young well i remember this guy <laughs> years ago going through a border and he was shown his passport and the guy said you know that's not you the, you're, you're Passport says you're this age and you look, you know, this age. And he says, well, I take communion every day. And I was like, oh, I'm actually 95. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, uh, but I take communion. We take communion every day for decades now. But you know what? We find, for example, like what does it say in 1 Corinthians 11? It says that as we're partaking of his broken body, his shed blood, we're declaring, we're remembering what was accomplished on that cross. So we're appropriating it for our bodies, for our families, for whatever it is that you're 
praying into, but the power of the blood never grows old. And this is going to be on full display, I believe, in a resurrection of dead dreams, a resurrection of uh, prodigals coming home, of addictions being broken, of healing and bodies. You know, the same guy, he had gangrene uh, for two weeks or more in his fingers and toes. He was told, it's you're going to have to have the amputation. I'm so sorry, but this is just the way it is. But remember, you know, going to the hospital, I just felt like God said, what if I heal him? And I'm like, well, okay, what if you do? So <laughs> Uh, went there, took communion with him, prayed, just got the text just yesterday from his wife saying a miracle. The doctors are seeing, they're calling him the miracle man because all of the gangrene is gone. Oh, and he has, my. Full, and he doesn't need to have amputation. I can share more examples. I'm sure many of you, you have your own uh, examples. God is up to something extraordinary. The line of the tribe of Judah is roaring in 2024. And I believe there's a resurrection of that which is of him. And let's allow that which is not of him to fall away, to die, to be repented of because man, what's coming. We don't want to, you know, we want, we don't want to be on the wrong side of God and the wrong side of history. (laughs) So I'm excited. I'm very very excited for what's coming. I just felt such an anointing for healing. Um, you know, we just have a few minutes left. Um, if you would just stop a moment and pray for people, you know, I think you've got great authority. Uh, to heal the sick right now. You no, know, what keeps coming to my mind right now, I believe it's the Lord saying this, is that I was just, there was a, and we were in Bloomington, Illinois, and this young uh, 13 year old had a concussion really bad. He was, it was from sledding. He was knocked out and he just was not himself. Headaches and whatnot. Uh, he was healed in a moment. I feel like somebody has had similar, you've had a concussion. It has plagued you for a long time now, whether it's been headaches or you just don't feel like you're the, yourself. Mm-hmm. Lord, thank you for healing that concussion. Concussions be healed now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that renders those concussions null and void, all the effects of that. We just speak forgiveness of of anybody that was involved in how it happened. It might have been an accident of some kind. And they also bless the healing of arthritis. You know, uh, my grandmother was completely healed of arthritis. I thank you, Lord, arthritic pain even now is melting, is being broken in Jesus name and in joints, but in knees, healing of all arthritis, pain, and all of that just going through the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, aches and pains that have just been accepted, but we say, no, that's not of you. Though that back ache, that uh, that neck ache that has been plaguing, it's illegal trespassing. Mm -hmm. It's time that that leaves Aches and pains go through the power of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I so feel that there's some, you know, you're praying and crying out for a financial turnaround. The Lord is about to give you a real financial miracle. Remember your tithes. That's a no brainer. You give that to the Lord, your offerings. But I see a financial breakthrough for those that you, it's just almost like it's been hard to write the check because you're trying to say, is there even that much in my account? I see you writing a check. And I just bless a financial turnaround. Be faithful as in your tithes, your offerings, but God is doing that. And one other thing, I so feel prodigals are coming home to the Lord. The moms, dads, there is a, I don't know, something about this now season where there's like a wake up call. So I bless the turnaround. Prodigal sons and daughters coming to the father's home. Amen. 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 It's, It's amazing that, you know, we're talking about really two different aspects of healing, because uh, one of the things Patricia was focusing on was uh, healing that needs to take place because of trauma or injury, as opposed to sickness. They're, they're distinctive, distinctly different. And uh, mm-hmm. God's really, he's able to do and desires to do both, you know, and what, what we're really believing for, and I know that, Cindy, you talk about this all the time, is we want to start seeing the healing, the kind of healings manifest where an arm grows, uh, an yeah. organ is an organ is replaced, or something like that. I, it's not like we don't care about the, the sickness aspect of it or the the spirit of sickness that needs to be dismissed. But I think the the world and the, even the body of Christ be, being the first fruits of this, we want to see the manifestation of the glory of God manifested as it relates to trauma being healed in people's bodies. 
Amen. Well, we're just yeah, out amen. of time. Appreciate it. It's been so good. We have <clears throat> talked about the fear of the Lord. Yeah, we could do three more programs, Israel, but she's got to go. Union. It's really great. Listen, if you like the show, would you like it? Just take a second and click on like and subscribe uh, on YouTube. And also, we have a conference coming up called the Deborah's Women. Come on, Deborah's Arrive, July 18th through 20th. This year, it's going to be at Global Spears, which is Chuck Pierce's church. Uh, it's about, mm, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes from the DFW airport. You're going to love it. It's a beautiful facility. And so join us there, and you will be getting a notification if you haven't subscribed to our um, e-list, you know, you want to do that, go on generals.org. Thank you for joining us. Thank and, you. And if they want to get some of the yeah. materials that Patricia's done, I mean, she's got yeah. books and she's got other things. Yeah. Take advantage of the resources that she has. And I know that we'll be uh, across the screen at the bottom right now, even as we speak. Yeah. A parenting book called Raising Burning Hearts. Yeah. Wow. And there's Raising how you can reach her. PatriciaBootsma.com. Yeah. Yeah. JHIsrael.com. B-O-O-T-S-M-A. Well, thank you. We're so glad the Lord sent you as a missionary to America from Canada. And we... Tell John hi, and we love you. Thank you all for watching. Everyone, thank you for watching. We love you guys. Bye-bye.